Welcome to the second part of our organic chemistry study. In the first part, we saw the fact that carbon compounds are very many and exist in families called homologous series. Now, these organic compounds are so many, let's see how they are classified, what groups they are divided into. So the heading is types of organic compounds. Now, organic compounds are broadly classified into <coughs> hydrocarbons and non-hydrocarbons. This is one way of classifying organic compounds, hydrocarbons and non-hydrocarbons. Now the hydrocarbons are those organic compounds that contain these two elements and nothing else. They contain carbon, they contain hydrogen and no third or fourth element. On the other hand, the non-hydrocarbons are those compounds that are not hydrocarbons, those compounds that are not qualified to be called hydrocarbons. It doesn't necessarily mean that non-hydrocarbons are compounds that have carbon, hydrogen and other elements. That would not be very correct because if we were to hold on to that, then a compound like CCL4 would have no place. It would have no place because tetrachloromethane, which of course is an organic compound, is not a hydrocarbon, neither does it have carbon, hydrogen and other elements. So basically we say whatever does not fit in here will fit in there. So hydrocarbons, carbon and hydrogen only, any other compound that is not here would be there. Now families of compounds under the hydrocarbon um, group include the alkanes, also called paraffins, then the alkenes, also called um, olefins and then of course we have the alkynes alkynes are also called acetylenes then permit me to add benzene and alkyl benzenes when we say alkyl benzenes they are those compounds that have um, the benzene ring and then a hydrocarbon chain attached to it so those are alkyl benzenes, they are also hydrocarbons. Now beyond that, every other homologous series will be part of the non-hydrocarbons, including the alkanals, alkanones, alkanols, alkamite acids, amides, amines, nitriles, cabilamines, ethers, esters, carboxylic acids, and their derivatives, you know, all of them are examples of non-hydrocarbons. So in terms of what they contain, these are the only families of compounds that we know to be hydrocarbons. Now, in some other classifications, organic compounds are divided into the aliphatic and the aromatic. Now, this is a very popular method of classification, aliphatic compounds and aromatic compounds. Now, I'd like to do something like what I did there in terms of differentiating them by saying aromatic compounds. Well, there's um, the true meaning of aromaticity as given to us by this man, a rich Huckel. So Huckel was the man who gave us the meaning of the term aromaticity. He brought an approved meaning where we look at compounds and um, the number of the localized pi electrons they have and so on. But at this level, because of course I believe my target audience are just um, O-level students, I'd like to tell you something that is not very correct but at least suitable for your level and that is aromatic compounds are derivatives of benzene as well as benzene itself. So benzene is aromatic. Derivatives of benzene are the other aromatic compounds. That would mean, therefore, that to identify an aromatic compound, you would simply be looking out for this ring. Once you see this particular ring, you say the compound is aromatic. Where this ring is not present, you say the compound is not aromatic, which means it is aliphatic. Now, for the aliphatic compounds, which are those compounds that are not aromatic, those compounds that do not have the benzene ring, the identity of the aromatics, they can also be of two types. There are some of them that occur in the form of open chains like this. You see them this way. 
you see that they have open chains and then there are some that you see in this form in the form of closed rings when aliphatic compounds occur in the form of open chains like this we will say that they are acyclic acyclic those are the ones with open chain but aliphatic compounds with closed rings like this will be described as cyclic or alicyclic take note alicyclic is not the same as acyclic alicyclic is another term for cyclic so cyclic aliphatics are those aliphatics that occur in the form of rings but their ring is not the same as the benzene ring then acyclic aliphatics are those aliphatics that occur in the form of straight chains now those acyclics that occur in the form of open chains may actually be in the form of straight chains like this or branch chains but of course we want to leave the classification at this level so i expect that you now know the difference between aromatic and aliphatic basically aromatic benzene or any compound having the benzene ring otherwise aliphatic and among those that are aliphatic if the compound is open like this we say it is acyclic but if it is ringed we say it is cyclic so if you had this ring i just drew here now you see that it has five carbons because it has five carbons you'd like to say pent assuming you have um, at least a small foundation in this area of nomenclature then pent for five carbons all the carbon to carbon bonds are single so I'll add a in and because the five carbons are not in a straight ring or open chain instead they're in the form of a ring i'll say cyclo so this is cyclopentane now these cyclic compounds you commonly hear cyclo as part of their names then having seen how to classify organic compounds i would like to say a word on saturated and unsaturated compounds because people confuse that a whole lot what does it mean to say that a compound is saturated and what does it mean to say that a compound is unsaturated i'll go straight to the point looking at this compound here i'll call it saturated it is saturated because all of its carbon to carbon bonds are single all of its carbon to carbon bonds are single in other words it does not have this or that these are the two signs of unsaturation and please take note these two signs of unsaturation are not just double bond and triple bond instead they are carbon to carbon double bond and carbon to carbon triple bond so look at this compound if you do not listen very attentively to what has been said or what I have just told you you may end up calling this compound unsaturated why there's a double bond there but this compound is actually saturated that double bond is not the type we gave you as the identity of unsaturated compounds as the sign of unsaturation that double bond is between carbon and oxygen so it's not a sign of unsaturation when you look out for unsaturation, you look at the carbon to carbon bonds. And here, all the carbon to carbon bonds we find to be what? Single. So because all the carbon to carbon bonds are single, we say this compound is saturated. But what if, on the other hand, we had this compound? Yes, we'll say this compound is unsaturated unsaturated because it possesses the carbon to carbon double bond now in organic chemistry we discover that organic i'm sorry saturated compounds behave very differently from unsaturated compounds in terms of their choice of reactions for example a saturated compound will undergo a substitution or elimination reaction typically whereas the unsaturated compound can undergo addition um, elimination and even substitution depending on where its degree of saturation is 
So as we proceed in later videos, we'll talk about how to distinguish between the saturated and the unsaturated, I mean for the organic compounds. By then we'll be talking about things like bromine water, potassium permanganate as being used to differentiate unsaturated from saturated. But very quickly, let me mention that benzene is a remarkable compound not just for the amazing stability of the benzene ring, but also for the fact that even though benzene is unsaturated, it likes to do what saturated compounds do. That is, it prefers substitution reactions to addition reactions. So if asked, does benzene undergo addition? The answer is yes. Does benzene undergo substitution? Yes. But which one does it prefer? Substitution. Why? because the benzene ring has some kind of very remarkable stability stability is kind of rare so benzene having achieved this stability would not want to lose it so easily and it loses the stability when it undergoes addition reactions so put in another way addition reactions destroy the benzene ring but substitution reactions preserve the integrity of the ring. They keep the ring intact. So because benzene wants to preserve the integrity or wants to keep the integrity of its ring, it chooses substitution over addition. Now, having reached this stage, I would take a break. We'll go on a break. And after the break, we'll return to talk more about organic compounds just one more video before we enter the first homologous series being the alkane series or paraffin series i'll see you after the break 